He was raw, he was sexual. He had this fantastic energy that just filled the room. I think it's the love songs that define him. He is the romantic poet. And I realised that, like, he was the guy that wrote basically everything. Here is one of the hottest new groups to, I reckon, emerge in 1980, Paul Kelly and the Dots. I think he's one of those guys, he wanted to be as good as his heroes. He wanted to be a great songwriter. Are you very ambitious, do you think? Yeah. I wanted to write great songs. That's what the ambition was and is. His songs have trapped his life so closely. And no one actually knows where the truth ends and where the fiction begins. He really is not an open book. Jimmy Rogers! The way to Paul is through his songs. There's a strong streak of social responsibility in there. Bad things happen when good people sit in silence, and Paul doesn't sit in silence. But I, you know, want to be careful not to make him a saint, because he ain't a saint. I had a dream. I'd had trouble keeping bands together. My marriage had broken up. I wasn't writing any songs. It was just given that musicians were pretty wasted. I tried most things. Heroin was a drug that I just had an affinity with. Out of that suffering and loss has come his art. Think of murder, never had the money. Then when he got laid off, we really hit the skits. You are driving through the chain in the pouring rain on the cavity. Paul speaks to us about our Australianness, and that is a priceless thing. <laughs>